Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. I'm going to just bring this one around over here like this and uh, I need to turn it around a little bit more to get it sort of lined up with what I want to do and I should in theory just be able to press H like that and it should just now carry on and continue with cultivating and seeding the field. Now, it is struggling a little bit to get up the hill, so possibly we could do with having the wheel weights back on there that I've mentioned previously, but I've... well... I, <laughs> I was thinking that it's doing all right without them, but it doesn't seem to be. It does seem to be really struggling there with it spinning like it is. It was suggested that perhaps we didn't need the front weight on this one. Um, because the weight is behind the tractor like that and we could just be compressing it down. I'm going to disagree with that because we can have the four-wheel drive fully engaged on this. And pulling like it is up the hill, it's going to be putting less pressure on the front wheels. Having that weight pulling it down is going to be helping the four-wheel drive to properly engage. Um, the biggest problem we've got at the moment is the lack of weight down on the back wheels, which is why we would want to seriously consider having the wheel weights back on this thing as well and really get some weight pressing down. We've got wide tyres going on it, and the wide tyres, we got those for a reason. They are there in order to... Uh, distribute the weight evenly across the field. We haven't got just regular tyres, so we're, we're reducing the compression, quite the compaction quite a lot um, by having those wide tyres on the tractor, but the lack of wheel weight... It is only coming up this hill that we've got this problem, and it's not like churning up seeds that have already been planted. It's doing a bit of churning of the ground, and then the... Um, the seed drill then goes and puts seeds in afterwards, after it's gone over with a cultivator. So, in theory, it shouldn't be making any, like, permanent marks on the field or anything like that. It should just be able to keep going. But, if it continues to be much of a problem, I mean, now, th this is where we want to test where we're looking, is uh, going along the top. How much is it spinning as we go along the top here? Because that's going to be what most of the field is going to be like when we're doing our runs up and down the field rather than our runs uh, around the edge. It's Around the edge at the moment is obviously it's going to take a little bit more doing for it. But uh, once we start doing around the edge, uh, sorry, once we've done around the edges of the field and we start working our way up and down on the land work, then it's more level. So, in theory, we shouldn't need the wheel weights, and in which case, it's unnecessary compaction on the soil. So, I think it's really just a case of wait and see. And we'll see how, it's, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it pans out now. How well are you going to get round this corner? Sort of seems to be doing all right at the moment. It's possibly going to have left a little tiny bit over there when it gets back round to that corner. It... The curve there, like, it, it sort of, the way that it does the corner ends up making it more pronounced over time, doesn't it? So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that sort of works out later. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do anything with it at the minute. I'm, I'm not going to interfere with that at all at the moment. But it, it is going to be interesting to see how the, um, like, once it does it, because I'm going to do three times round. I think twice is not going to be enough. So it's going to be interesting to see how it sort of affects going around on the third time with the way that the corners are, like way back over there, that, that those corners are becoming more and more pronounced on bits that don't really need pronounced corners. Is that going to end up causing us problems or not? I don't really know. I mean, going straight down over here, that's, that's not going to cause us any problems. So let's go and have a look around the rest of the yard. I've got this one here ready to load up another load of manure. I've got the combine over here that needs to be put away. So we're going to do that first. That's going to be our very first port of call. I'm going to bring the combine over to here. So our very first port of call was actually putting the, um, the seed drill going. So... 
Uh, we, we've done our first port of call. We're now doing our second port of call, which is to put the combine away. We want to get this corn header stuffed right into the back of the shed. And then we'll put the other header on and we'll reverse the combine into the shed after we've done that. But before we go and put anything away, we will take it round to the workshop and we will give it a complete service. And then we'll do the same with the standard header as well. That one can be serviced. So I'll bring you over to here, like this, skip out, run round, and take a look. So we've got a little bit of repair work on there for $24. That one has got a little bit more repair work for $186, but overall not doing too bad. And then we can race over here. So this can go into the back of the shed. Last time I left the other header outside of the shed, but several people pointed out, well, actually, I don't need to do that. If I was to put it onto the combine and then back the combine into the shed, the header would at least be covered by the overhang on there. So it would get, it would be afforded some protection from the elements rather than it having to be left outside, which is a good idea. I like this idea. So we're going to try that now. I've got to make sure that I don't have the header over too far or I'm not going to be able to get access to my um, sprayer over there for doing the herbicide. But that shouldn't be too much of an issue. I don't think we're going to end up getting too close to that one. Where's our seed drill? Right, that one's working along the bottom there. On a, He's just now started his third pass. And I am very tempted when it gets up this end to put those wheel weights on. But it's it's only going up that hill, isn't it? Like, that. that's the only time that we really need it, is when he's going up the hill. So... It's, it's a job to know sometimes, you know, how, how much compaction is it going to add and how much is it going to add to its ability to hold on to the ground a little bit better. Because at the moment, the, the way that it's wheel spinning a lot on the hills, it's not great. We, we don't want it to keep doing that. We would like it to stop doing it. Let's just repair that one there like that and back out again. Um, let me skip over to the tractor. It was pointed out last week that I originally started the series saying that I wasn't going to be tabbing between machines and now I sort of slowly started tabbing more and more. I mean, I do tab. Uh, I always said I was going to tab into... What was that in aid of? Uh, I'm not really sure what that was for. It's... It does do some strange things from time to time here, I've noticed. But that was particularly weird. Uh, anyway, I, um, I I was tabbing to hired help anyway. That that was something that I was already doing. But, um, yeah, I've, I've sort of grown more and more doing more and more tabbing between any of the machines. Uh, and it, it, it has been noticed. However... It was also pointed out that I've got a lot more machines now, and if I was walking between all of my machines doing all different jobs, half of my episodes would now just be me walking around rather than actually getting any work done, which is a fair point. Um, so, yes, it's uh, I am doing more walking around than I... Uh, the sort of tabbing between machines than I was doing, but, uh, yeah, the general consensus seems to be that that is actually... An acceptable crime. That is that is what we are calling an acceptable crime. Right, I'm going to stop you and I'm just going to unhitch that one. I'm going to run down here. We can do a quick job on this. I'll bring you on round here. And I'm going to have to sort of tuck you in round the back of the workshop. Over to here. And we are going to do the, we're going to do the wheel weights. Right, I've, I've ummed and ahed about it long enough. Let's get these wheel weights done. We'll repair you while you're at it there. And then we will customize like this. We've got wide tires. We want wide tires with those weights. Customize. Yes. Okay. And then I can jump onto there. I'll put that front weight back on. That's going to stay on. And let's get out of here. And I'll run back up and I'll grab that one. I don't know what that little... Why it was acting a bit weird along the bottom run down there. But uh, I'm, I'm sure it had its reasons. What I'm going to do here is I'm not going to bother about doing anything just on this bottom end of the field. I will manually turn it round and set it so that it's heading up the hill again, up here. 
And then we can let it go and do that. And we'll let it run all the way up to the top. Uh, well, it will run all the way over to the bottom corner over there. And then I'll take it up to the top of the field and we will start working from up there. That's where we're going to end up being. So you go on up here. And it is still spinning a bit. But nowhere near as much as it was spinning just now. On the last, the last run up this field, it was spinning an awful lot more than it is right. That is so much better. That is a massive improvement. I mean, right there on the very steepest bit, yes, we have got some spinning. But that is so much better going up there. Okay, I'm quite pleased that we did this. That was the right decision. We're now actually sort of... You see it when, well, yeah, it, it is still spinning, but it's that that is that's definitely much better. It's definitely massively improved on there. Now, of course, I'm going to stick with this one a minute just while we go up over the top because I want to see what it's like on that top corner up there. That's that's the bit that I'm curious about. Here, it should be fine. It's just a fairly standard corner there, sort of right angle turn. Um, but it's the one up there. It's sort of trying to turn it into a right angle turn, but it's still not actually a right angled corner up there. You know, while you're messing around with that, we can very quickly come down here. I've already gone and done the combine. So all I gotta do is take it over to the shed. So we'll take it over this way a little bit. And I can watch oh, the Puma is now is doing 7k on there. He's 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 moving. He's he's doing something. Let me just bring him round over here like that, and then I'll go back up here. Oh, he's, he's still not fully gotten into place. We, he's now gotten into place, which means we can go and put the combine away in a minute, and that will be done then. So we are up here. We're, we've done right round. This field down here is all planted, ready and, and finished. And soil composition down here. Uh, we need fertilizer spread on that field down there. That's what we've got to do next. I think we need fertilizer spread on that field. So it comes up to here, like that. And then it will go and turn round. And it will go round sort of a big arch going out over that way. And... Should be all right, actually, because it sort of made this into more of a... I, I guess that's why it does it. It sort of turns it into a right-angled turn, and then it can cope with it a bit better. It doesn't like non-right-angled corners, by the look of it. it. struggles with those. So then we back up here, keeping it fairly straight. Back as far as it needs to go, which is quite a long way back. And then it's immediately setting out to try and line up the edges correctly. But that's look that's a lot neater now. There. Okay, well that's that actually worked out quite well. Is well hopefully it will do the rest. It did have a little bit of a, a, a wibble going up over that bit there last time round, so hopefully it won't have too much of a wibble on it this time. It should should just work fine. I'm tempted to leave the AI vehicle extension on, but just have it straight like a normal worker once we get up to the top bit up here. Whether that's going to work or not, I don't really know. It, it might be that we don't really have that option available. Now, you are still going. You, see, it's... I don't know what that bit was all about, but it's now getting more pronounced. So if it were to come round the field one more time, it would stop pull out and uh, change it round again on that bit and guarantee it but we don't need to I just need I just need to get this one he just got to go down to the bottom of the hill so I'm gonna let him keep going he can go down to the bottom of the hill we can put this one back in the shed now, now I gotta make sure that I keep the combine over so that the header is not blocking access to our sprayer over there so the header is sticking out a little bit she doesn't need to stick out very much does it look, look at that Right, let's bring that combine over a little bit and then back it round again like that. And it's still doing all right there. That's that's fine, actually. And then now we can come back to there. Sort of go about there, I think. It's close to the stanchion there. And over this side, it is sticking out a little bit. So we'd sort of maybe put a tarp over that. I think we, because it's open-sided shed and that, and this is quite a delicate machine, really, 
Um, we would end up putting a tarp over the whole thing anyway. And here, I just want to watch it down to the bottom corner of the field. As soon as I've done that, I can lift it up and we can go up to the top of the field up there and start it doing its work backwards and forwards. Once it's done, once it's up there and going, we've got a few other things to put away in a yard. Actually, I think there's only one thing to put away. It's just the plow. Um, and then the other tractor, we, we can go back to selling some more manure up there. So we've, we've now gone three times around this field. There's a little bit left. You know, I'm going to leave that little bit. I'm not going to worry about that little bit. We'll, that will get done right at the very end. That will all get picked up, but it will be fine. It's not going to make any differences to anything. So let's get on up this hill, right up to the very top. Um, and we can get started going along there. So I did get a few comments last week asking about what the next, you know, the, the, some things to do with the next series. So what sort of uh, were my long-term plans and, and things like that with it? Um, I don't really know at the moment. All I know at the moment with the next series is that it is going to be based on uh, contracting rather than carving something out of the wilderness. I like what we've done here. And potentially, I may end up doing another series like this in the next game. Right, I want it to be going that way. And then we got straight up and down, straight like a normal worker like that. Potentially, in FS21, whenever that is eventually released, we can do another hardcore series where we are carving our um, stuff out of the wilderness like we did with this one. So we're just going to want a forestry map. And then we take it from there. Uh, it's it's all right doing that. So I, I, at the moment, I don't know, though. I'm, I, I'm not making any promises. I'm not making any guarantees that that is how it's going to be. Uh, I've not made any complete decisions on FS21. I, I, I really don't know. But I like the idea of trying to do something like this again. Considering how long this has taken... And considering the time of year, if FS21 had been released at the same time that this game was released last time round, then we wouldn't be starting a new series. It wouldn't be time to start a new series. We would just stay on this until the next game was released in another eight weeks or so. Uh, it may even be less than that. I think it was October that it was released last time. So it could be, it could only have been, like, we could have just had six weeks left on this. Um, but we don't. We, we got a lot longer than that. So we do have time to start another series. So it does look like one hardcore series is all we're really going to have time for. Because it takes a lot to build up to this when you've got to cut down all the trees first. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know what long-term plans I've got for additional series. Or whether I will come back to doing one like this with um, like how we've done this long-term. Absolutely don't know. I can't really say, but uh, we'll. I, I guess we'll see once the new game comes out. That's that's all I can do. So all I can tell you is we'll have to wait and see once the new game comes out, and and then we'll have a look. So for the next series, it's just we're going to start off with contracting, and we're going to work through it like that. So it's going to be similar rules to what we've had here. There won't be any loan this time round. Um, we'll just start with nothing, and we will say that there won't be any loan available to us. Well, at least to start with. Um, depending on how quickly I want things to progress and stuff like that, I might change that later and take out a loan. Uh, I don't really know. I'm not going to be doing it on seasons the same as this. Uh, it will be non-seasons related. I'll drop that one down there. I do seasons in the um, time lapse series, and I did seasons already on another series anyway, so I don't feel the need to have um, more running with season because I know there's quite a like I know that seasons is hugely popular, but surprisingly, to well, I find it surprising actually. Um, there's a lot of people that don't particularly care for seasons. We want the stole console right there, like that. I'll customize that one. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't actually care for seasons. Uh, don't really want seasons and don't use it in their normal gameplay. They play the game 
as number one. Then there are other people who use seasons almost exclusively in everything they do. So I know that, you no, know, it, it is a very popular mod. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that don't particularly like it and don't use it. And therefore, I don't want to be doing all of my content based around using seasons when there are such a large quantity of people that don't use it. I've done a series, that we did the Alps series, where we had a look at seasons. And whilst it's good, like, I, I do like it. I don't think it works very well for a regular Let's Play because you've got to skip so much time. Like, the, the, it, it ends up sort of... It, it doesn't work out very well, I don't think. Um, like, I end up sort of... There's, there's Either I've got to skip a lot of stuff and I don't get to do very much in each season, or each season takes a really, really long time to work through, and I'm back to that old um, kind of conundrum. Do I go and spend hours and hours and hours playing the game behind the scenes in order to advance it along a little bit? I don't like doing that. Um, I generally struggle to find the time to be able to physically do that anyway uh, so it's not something that I like doing it is something that I've tried to remove completely from behind the scenes for anything that I do um, spending lots and lots of time playing the game in order to advance it for another video um, so I do seasons in the time lapse because that way I can do long term things lots lot put in a lot of time onto something and I don't have to spend hours and hours working on it off camera. The, the entire thing, everything is shown on camera. You see it all. That's, that's the joy of the time lapse and that's, that's what makes it work out really well. So we can do it on there but yeah, for, for Let's Plays I'm really not that fond of it. I'm, I'm really not. Like, I like the idea of it, and I like, you know, that there are some things that are nice to see, but it, it generally ends up sort of becoming a bit more... Unless you've only got, like, a couple of small fields, it ends up becoming rather tedious doing it like that. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's not something that I naturally gravitate towards. Because th there are certain types of gameplay that are fun to do on your own and, and fun to do for single player in that that aren't so great for multiplayer and well, well I suppose they do work out alright for multiplayer but they don't work out very well for video because you're doing a lot of things the same. Like I know that there are plenty of people who will go and play a game and they would manually do a field like this. They, they, they would try to manually do as much as possible. Now, I know that there are people that do videos and there are live streamers that will live stream them planting and cultivating and working a big field like this manually and just sitting there going up and down the field. Uh, I see, I've, I've seen the streamers doing it. Um, honestly, it's not my style. Like, I can't sit and do that. I can't sit and do that in my own time. I certainly can't do it well enough to make it entertaining for somebody to watch in a live stream. That that, that wouldn't happen. Um, not that I... You know, I, I'm not planning on doing much like, like live streams. I was doing live streams, but they're... They haven't worked out very well for my home life. My youngest son who's very autistic he struggles a huge amount with the live streams and so at the moment it's unlikely that that is going to change it's unlikely that i'm going back to doing regular live streams anytime soon because of just how difficult he finds it he needs a safety net is what he needs um and at the moment i pre-record all of my videos right all videos are pre-recorded i try to do them on the same days every week um so there's a, a, a regular schedule but everything is pre-recorded and he knows and he's tested it and he it's it sort of it's passed his tests and everything he knows that if i need to i can instantly stop recording instantly step away and take however long is needed to go and deal with it and then come back and resume recording or move it round um, and, and, and do things like that. So I, I've got complete freedom to do it however I like. 
even though I am recording, I'm you know, and I don't want to be interrupted. He and he he knows that I'm not he, I'm not to be interrupted. He also knows that if it's needed, I can be interrupted. Whereas the live stream is different. Yes, I know that there's plenty of people who say, well, yeah, you know, family comes first. If you need to, you step away. But it's still a live stream, isn't it? It's still different. It's still something that is streaming out. And if the live stream stops, most people will drift away from the live stream and it won't come back when it resumes. It's different. It works differently. And it works differently for him because he knows that he shouldn't be interrupting it. And that puts pressure on him. And it, it, it gives him sort of... He's, he's got this thing then where he's, he cannot interrupt. And this puts serious, serious pressure onto him. And it just in his own mind. And he, he really, really, really struggles with it. Like, it really genuinely struggles. It's a really, really difficult thing for him. And so, because of that, and because uh, my wife's health was deteriorating, we, we, we stopped doing the live streams for quite a while. Have I got another one here that I wanted to do? Yes, I do. I was, I was doing that one. I was just watching the seeds for a minute. Let's start you back up again and go and move you. I didn't see how much we sold that for. I missed that. Um, so yeah, that's why I took the decision to stop doing the live streams, and then we've got, it's made a big difference at home, it's made a huge difference at home, since I stopped doing those live streams, it's made a massive difference to him for three days of the week, because Thursday it was live stream tomorrow, Friday it was live stream today. Saturday, it was run down on stress because of the live stream the previous day. Um, that's just that's, like that's how much it's affected him with it, and how much of a difference it has made. It's it, it, it's made a huge, huge difference. So, for that reason, I'm unlikely to go back to doing live streams on a regular basis. We we may sort of pull one in every now and then, just as a, a special occasion type thing, but. Um, Regular ones at the moment aren't going to return. Uh, that being said, that doesn't mean they will never return, because I know that there are some of you that particularly liked watching the live streams. So I'm not saying that they will never return, and we will see if we can put in the occasional one here and there, maybe a special at Christmas or something like that. Um, but, uh, and then in time, we may decide that actually, you know, we're, things have progressed enough that maybe we think we can attempt it again and then everybody gets what everybody wants because I know that quite a few of you did really enjoy watching them and would watch them every week without fail and would be there to tune in for every live stream that I did which was quite amazing really um like uh, it, it never ceased to amaze me that so many people would want to sit and and, and watch like that so it, it was it was really awesome it was, it was absolutely fantastic um, so yeah, there, there is possibility that we can come back to it, it's just right now it doesn't work very well for us. So we, we just got to wait and see. Okay, we have got that trailer almost full. How much can go in? Right, there we go. We've emptied that one out, so I stop that one there and I'll do that. So now if we just take a look in the animals a second. Uh, we're 239 on our sheep, so we're very nearly full on the sheeps over there. We have exactly 200 pigs. We've got 55,000 litres of manure over there and 22,000 litres of slurry. So we've got at least one more trailer load of manure to go and move. And this one here, manure left, 91,000. No, we haven't got 91,000 litres of manure in there at all. That's, uh, that's not updated yet. That needs a tick. It's got to have an update tick in order to get that correct. So we'll go over to the pigs next and I'll get a load from them. And then we can come back over to the cows afterwards maybe, something like that, I, I don't really know. But that will probably be in tomorrow's episode. We've got enough time to drag this over and sell this little lot here. So this, remember this is the merchant's trailer. We've, we've, we've helped the merchant load it up. We've loaded it up for him using our blower. That is our blower, but this trailer isn't ours. This one belongs to the merchant. He's just come to collect the stuff. And we're going to drag it over to this cell point like this. And we're going to unload it for him. So he's going to take that, and then we're going to go up here and just take a quick look at this one. I'm curious 
how we're going to do now with going on past the stone. I think it will probably turn round and go the other direction without any problem. But then it will stay on that side of the big stone. $2,215 we've just had. So we'll get the next load done in a bit, but that won't be just yet. That will be after... Uh, well, when we come back tomorrow, we will go and do that tomorrow. So there's a little bit more manure that we can go and move. We've also got to get the fertilizer spread up here, so we've got that to do. And there's a little patch down the other end of the field that we're going to want to do as well. Go and have a look down here. Let's not soil composition. No, we want uh, the growth or the fruit types down there. There's a little, little patch right down there, look, that's been missed that we will be doing in a minute. So it's just turning around. I want to see what happens when it goes up to this stone. That's the last little bit, and then we are going to be leaving. So is he going to work through the short work right here, or is he going to go? I think he will probably go across that patch because it's only a very short piece there. And so then he'll go all the way across, and he'll start doing the long runs. Tempted to put him doing the short runs now, actually. Very tempted to just set him going the short runs, and finish out this piece here, and then the rest of the field is, is pretty much straightforward and, and can carry on and be done. So he's, he's going to go all the way along here. He's just going to keep going right the way through that. So the next pass should go up to the stone, I think, and then stop and turn around. I'll leave it as it is. It can keep going on this bit for now. But anyway, I've run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Fritgar. Goodbye, and see you later.